Check this out, watch what this does. Look at that gauge creep guys, check that out. Check how that's pulling it over. What's going on guys, welcome back. My name is Brandon and today we're gonna to discuss some things that have to do with when you're welding and it's gonna be warping and distortion. And I'm gonna show you guys some things that you can do to combat that. Stick around. Have you guys ever put something together and got it all welded up and then when you're all said and done, you looked at it and realized that it's not a perfect 90 degree, it's not what you wanted it to be. And we slide this over, see that? There's a gap there, it's tight at the bottom, gap at the top. So that's not a full 90 degrees. Well, what happened? Why did that do that? Well, what happens a lot of times, guys, is that when you're welding, the metal actually will start pulling. Well, we're gonna talk about different ways to combat that. Now, one of the best ways that you can help combat that is to actually have like a fixture table. And this is a fixture table that I built myself. If you guys haven't seen the video on that, check it out. I built an actual template that is actually used to make all these holes. So you're not just individually drilling the holes randomly. It's a template that you actually drop the drill down into and it makes this entire table perfect. It works really nice, then it just uses some shoulder bolts like this and you just drop them down into the table. Now, so what you'd wanna do is you'd wanna fixture down your work. You'd wanna keep your stuff clamped down. And this is the easiest way to do that. This makes a perfect 90. Clamp it down using your clamps. Now you'd be good to weld that joint. It's clamped down to the table. It's gonna help eliminate a lot of the warping, but it's not absolutely perfect. And these clamps are really easy to build, guys. You can get these locally, source them out, modify them. I've got a video on that as well. I'll put a link up above, you can check it out. But if you guys are into like welding and fabrication, this is a great uh, piece of tool to have because you use it just for more than that. Like I work, this is like my work surface. I use this all the time. These pieces that I have here, guys, they're just coupons that I cut up out of some scrap metal that I had laying around from a project. And they do have some paint on them and we're not gonna be concerned about the paint in this. Obviously, if you were welding on these and it mattered, you'd wanna get the paint off. That's not what this episode is about. What I'm gonna show you is some scientific stuff that I think you'll think is pretty cool on measuring how much things warp under heat. If I was to weld along this joint, this piece of metal right here is gonna to wanna to have a tendency to lift up. The way to combat that, one, is like we just talked about, to hold down your workpiece, but the other is to alternate. Don't put all your heat right here and work your way around it in a circle because it'll actually pull. Wherever you're welding, that's where it's gonna pull. It's gonna pull in that direction. So what you'd wanna do is do a little tack here while it's sitting here, do a tack here, and then do another one on the inside because the first tack is gonna pull this up, then this tack is gonna pull it this way, this tack will pull it that way, then you'll flip it over and you can weld the other side. That'll help pull the tension back into the other side. You're just trying to combat the forces of the weld. So if you're putting heat here, just think you need to put heat on the other side. But I'm gonna put a small bead on this, and then we're gonna set up a little testing stand so that you can visually see how much it's moving. So now that we've got it tacked, the next logical place to weld this would be on this side. Now what prompted me to do this, guys, is that uh, some of you may know, some of you may not. I have a second channel and it's called Motivated 207 and on that channel I've pretty much done all my motorcycle stuff that I used to do on this channel. I've moved it all over to there. But what brought this on is a viewer recently mentioned about how I keep everything straight so I don't get distortion and I wanted to be able to show you distortion and I just used this tool, it's called the dial indicator. I just used this tool on my other channel to balance some wheels that were out of spec and I ended up getting those wheels within like seven thousandths of an inch, the dirt bike wheels, because in that video on my other channel, I actually used this dial indicator to show how far the wheels were out of spec or how far bent they were. So I figured this would be a great opportunity for me to set this dial indicator up and you'll actually have a visual, you'll see the dial move as I start welding the metal. 
The way this works, guys, is that this is a magnetic base right here, so I just turn that, now that's nice and solid. And, and then I'll just set up this gauge to however we need to set it up. I do want to be careful with this because obviously I don't want to destroy uh, my gauge because being around welding, welding sparks can destroy a lot of things real quick. I've already ruined a, a video camera by getting a spark on one of my lenses a while back. This is where we did our weld just a few minutes ago here. We've got the dial indicator set on zero and if this metal, which it should get pulled this way, this top piece should pull over this way when we weld along this. This is a very sensitive instrument. Each one of these lines, guys, is equal to a thousandth of an inch. Now, to give you an idea of what a thousandth of an inch is, a piece of paper is four thousandths of an inch thick, or roughly. So that would be four of these lines within that gauge. I'm going to start welding over here, and you should see this gauge go back. Watch if I push on this. When I'm pushing on that, the gauge is going backwards, so it'll show you how many thousandths of an inch that that's pulling it. Watch what this does. Look at that gauge creep, guys. Check that out. Check how that's pulling it over. Look at that guys, that's continuing to pull that over as it's cooling down. Okay, so that pulled that over 65 thousandths of an inch, which may not seem like much, and to the naked eye, you really don't notice that. But it's obviously not perfect anymore. It's definitely not what it was when we started, and not completely flat. And the problem is, is that if you don't correct these things now, or at least know how to correct them, you know, you get 65 thousandths here, and then you got another 65, and another 65, and before you know it, you've made, you know, five, six, or seven welds down the line, and it's not just 65 thousandths anymore. Now you're at a quarter of an inch, or a half inch out, or whatever. Um, it all adds up. It accumulates. So, one of the things that we can do to help combat this is this weld right here, and I did this on purpose. If I just put a tack here, a tack here, a tack here, and a tack here, that would have helped eliminate a lot of this. It still would have pulled it that way, but now when I come back over here, I would only have a little tack. I literally could weld a full bead, go right over my tack. That heat would pull it back in this direction. Because I have a big weld on there now, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get all of it out, but I know it won't read that same reading when I'm done. So let me go, just for the heck of it, throw another bead on top of this, and see how much this pulls it over and we'll talk about some ways that we can combat this and help prevent these big distortions from happening. I'm putting a lot of heat in it. All right, so I actually learned something, guys. I pounded the weld right to it. I put a ton of weld on there. You'd never have that. But the reason I did that is because I wanted to put a lot of heat in the part to see how it would affect the gauge. So we started at zero. It pulled it all the way around to 65 thousandths. Then I welded this side. It pulled it back to 74 thousandths. That gives you an idea of the equal forces that you're trying to do on each side. If you weld one side, you kind of got to do the same thing exactly to the other to eliminate that. Fixturing up your part on a table and holding it flat for as long as possible is going to prevent a lot of that. And in case you're wondering, guys, for this, I'm just using my Transteel 2200. I've got tons of videos with this machine. You can see I've got it set on 75 thousandths thickness. I'm using solid wire Lincoln 30 thousandths, and I'm using C25 gas. Now, some of you ask, well, why do you use this welder, or which welder do you use? This stays in my workshop. This doesn't leave my shop. It's a precision machine, as you can see. It's calibrated, although it's out of calibration as of January. This is a very expensive, very high-end machine. Not to sound braggy, but... For that reason, I don't take it out of the shop. I don't want this getting all banged around. 
uh, tossed in the back of the truck uh, and take a chance of something happening to it or you know get stolen or whatever. And my Yes Welder MIG 205 DS. That's the one I take with me elsewhere. And I also use it a lot in the shop too, but for the most part, um, these are affordable, these are budget, they're wicked accurate, they work great, uh, and this is the one I tote around with me most of the time. The phoniest stuff stays in the shop. So now let's try to do this fixtured up and do it like the right way, how I try to do it to get the least amount of warpage. So I would clamp down both of my pieces. Because I'm using these pins in these fixture table, I automatically know that this is a 90 degree angle. Put a tack here, I'd put a tack here, and I'd put a tack here. That just puts a small little area, small amount of heat. It's going to have the least amount of distortion. So that leads to processes. Now, depending on the process, you're going to have more heat and more distortion. So the more heat you have, the more distortion you're going to have. One of the potential problems that you can have with MIG is that it welds cold, or it has the ability to still look good, but weld cold. Uh, so MIG has the ability to not put a lot of heat in the part. And sometimes that's kind of what you want. If we were stick welding this, we'd be putting a lot of heat into it and we'd be getting a lot of distortion. So this is a fairly thin metal. It's 75 thousandths thick. So for that reason, MIG is a great option for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tack here, and I'm going to put a tack here, and I'm going to put a tack here. That's going to hold everything evenly tensioned, at least on these two sides, and then this side. Then I've got to flip it over and I'll tack the other side. That's how I go about getting this, as straight and as flat as I can. Now we'll loosen our clamps, we'll set it up like we did before and see how much distortion we get. One of the first things that I would do right now is I would visually examine it. I would take a look at how things look and does something appear to be off. So let's just say you put a square on this, and when you do, it tells you that this piece is going this way. Okay, I'm exaggerating. Well, the first thing you wouldn't want to do is weld this side, because that's only going to make it worse. By welding right here, you're only going to pull it, as we know from looking at our little demonstration, when we weld it here, it's going to pull it that way even further. So, if your piece is leaning this way, you definitely want to start on this side. Sometimes you can even cheat it a little bit by putting your hand against it and pushing it back some. You just got to remember, you can't push it beyond 90 because if you push it too far beyond 90, you're not going to be able to maybe pull it back all the way. You're just trying to create equal forces in the part. So now that I've got it tacked on all four corners, let's just say we put the square on it and it looks perfect. We can pick whatever side we want, we just have to make sure we put an even amount of heat input to it. It'll never be perfect, or very rarely if ever guys, especially looking at this dial, but that's why I chose this dial. Because this is, like I said, they're based on thousands of an inch. A piece of paper is four thousandths of an inch thick. So I think for you know the projects that we're probably doing, unless you're building a rocket ship or something like that, working in your workshop, you probably don't have to get it within a thousandth of an inch. Maybe there are times that you do, uh, but these will help you to know some of the things that you need to do to get it that much closer to being in tolerance. So with that said, I'm gonna weld one side, try to put even heat in it. We'll see how much this gauge is moved, and then we'll weld the other side and see if we can pull it back that same amount. Climbing up, 50 thousandths, 60 thousandths, 65. All right, let me weld the other side and see if we can pull that back the opposite direction. So you can see how the importance of trying to get even heat on each side, adding a little bead if you had to, um, to help pull it over. But by having this dial, it just gives you a very clear reference how far your metal is getting pulled. I mean, to the naked eye, this is absolutely perfect. This would be perfect for anything that we are doing. We would have zero issues with any of this, building furniture or any other thing. 
Uh, you would never get it within thousands of an inch building furniture, but I've used this uh, gauge as a demonstration just to show you how far uh, things can actually get pulled. You know, it might matter if this piece was, let's say, 10 feet long and you're welding it here, you know, rather than being 60 thousandths or, you know, 15 thousandths at this end, it could be, you know, 10 feet out, quarter of an inch off. So it's good to know these little things that you can do and how to fixture things up by tacking it and where to place your welds so that you can kind of help combat some of those pulling forces that you get when welding. And I'm hoping by showing you guys some of these things, it'll help you as well. It'll make your time in the workshop a lot easier. And when you take your project out, it's not all warped up or it's not completely warped up that you can't fix it. That's the key to this. A lot of times when I'm doing stuff, I kind of just think of this stuff in my head as I'm doing it. And I know that if I'm going to be doing a lot of welding on this side, uh, that it's going to be pulling that way. So I may end up just tipping it a little extra on this side before I weld it knowing that when I put the weld over here, it's going to help draw it back in and pull it into straight anyways. So this is just a quick video, guys, on how I combat warping and distortion. I've never even talked about it, I don't think, on this channel. So whoever suggested this to me or asked me the question, thank you, because I think it's something that maybe I take for granted, and it's just something that I do without actually knowing. But if you're not thinking about this stuff subconsciously as you're putting together your project, We've all had like warped up projects or we try to make something completely nice and square and it ends up coming out like a trapezoid or whatever. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you find these tips helpful in the workshop. And if you do, I'd consider a like and subscribe. New videos every Friday. If you wonder what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you want to see what I'm doing over on my hobby channel, go check me out, Motivated207. I'll have a link down in there. That's kind of like my hobby channel where my wife and I just having fun and work on dirt bikes and stuff like that. So until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care, stay safe, like, comment, subscribe. Bye.